Hey everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I sketch and paint a cafe or restaurant in Seoul, Korea. The materials that I use in this video are down in the video description below and I also have some videos explaining some of the materials that I use. Today I will be using this Lamy Safari pen with a medium nib and inside is water resistant ink from Noodlers. So this is the reference photo which I took myself in Seoul and as far as I know this is actually a sambap shop and sambap is a uh, rice wrapped in vegetables we only passed by this place uh, and i didn't get the chance to try it but i was really attracted to the color combo of course we have the green and red which are complementary colors and um, the exterior is really simple and clean with some interesting shadows and details this video will be in real time, so you can sketch and paint along with me. Firstly, I always visualize the whole building on the page and how much space it will occupy on the page. So I'm not doing a pencil sketch today, I'm just starting with a pen directly. But when I'm worried about the positioning of the um, building on the page, I always do um, little marks or dots. And that is just to get a sense of how big the building should be. So that really helps to position the building in the center of the page. So I know there are a lot of beginners who are watching and if you are a beginner, it might be hard taking that first step and drawing that first line. So what I think really helps a lot is having those reference points and also not to expect that freehand sketching like this will produce a perfect line. In, in fact, I find that I liked my sketches more when I didn't draw my lines too straight and one of the things i remember i used to struggle with was looking at that white page and um, imagining myself drawing something that is um, not centered on the page so if the center of focus is not in the center like maybe it's skewed to the sides of the page it might look weird and incomplete and yeah i've been there before so to avoid that it's um, easier to do some reference points or maybe a reference line and go from there or you can always do a pencil outline first i personally like just starting with a pen uh, it feels freer and I feel like um, certain subjects don't need that pencil reference, especially something that is more simple um, like this um, reference. So as you can see, I leave breaks in the lines here and there as I see fit. Sometimes if um, the break is too much, I then connect the lines together later on. Sometimes I layer on another uh, line or a few more lines, uh, or I go over those lines again if they need a bit of adjustment. So if you leave more breaks in the lines in certain areas, that area can also um, tend to look like there's more light coming in and if you layer on more lines together and they look thicker and darker then of course it looks like um, that area is darker as well. So if you have been watching a lot of my videos um, thank you so much. But I think you will notice that I will, um, I have been using this Lamy Safari fountain pen for a long time and with many of my sketches. 
And I haven't really cleaned this pen much. I just refill any time um, the ink runs out. And it's been really consistent for me. And the ink doesn't dry and clog the pen or anything. So I keep coming back and using this pen. Um, I currently am using uh, the medium nib. So it's a, a perfect thickness for this size of sketch. So I really like using this pen, um, if you haven't already noticed. Um, I also like using fine liners, but fine liners tend to give um, a more even line. And I personally, I like the unevenness and the organic um, lines that we can achieve with a fountain pen like this. So that's why I tend to keep using this pen in particular. So the main building is basically a simple rectangle broken up into two halves, which is the top and the bottom, with the green awning in between and the rest is just basically details. So for something that looks simple like this um, building, there's actually a lot of little details which are important and they give character and life to the building. So it's important to put in those little details. Thank you. 
All right, so we are almost done with the sketch and we have a lot of details already at the bottom half. So it's time to add in some texture to the wall at the top. So the red wall has some prominent um, brick texture to it, which is always nice to include on any building, really. I do love red brick walls and uh, I prefer that to like smooth cement walls. It's just more aesthetically pleasing to me. So I prefer and I also prefer to only draw some of the bricks on the walls as you can see and sometimes just a few lines which are suggestive of bricks. You don't even have to draw a perfect rectangle. And the viewer will fill in the blanks themselves. There is some room for imagination. And this is not a technical drawing. So as the artist, we can, you know, do what we like. And some might prefer to draw every single brick. But for me, that would make the wall really busy and complicated. So this is how I like to do it. Okay, so we are done with the line work and I'm just leaving the words on the signboard for later. So for today, I will be using this Daniel Smith Watercolor Essentials set. I have squeezed out some of the paint from the tubes and there are only six colors here. So I might supplement with a burnt sienna from this Winsor & Newton set. Um, and also I have some leftover paint on my palette. And these are Holbein paints, Hooker's Green and Burnt Umber. So I usually let the ink dry for a while, especially if I'm using paper that is less absorbent. On this paper, it really dries quite fast and I don't have to worry about the ink running after applying wet paint over it. So the first color that I'm mixing here is um, for the awning and I'm thinking, how do we get a green that's similar to the one in the photo? So the first color is um, Thallo Blue from Daniel Smith. And I mixed in some Hansa Yellow Light as well. And then I mixed in also a little bit of Hooker's Green. So blue plus yellow becomes green. So we have this um, nice blue-green color for the awning. As you can see, I'm painting the awning really quickly here, um, but I'm not filling in the blanks completely. I'm not filling in those shapes fully. I'm actually leaving a few little areas unpainted so that the white of the page shows through. And these, are, they, these kind of look like um, white specks. So these areas are um, potential highlights. Um, 
I don't always use them as highlights in the end because sometimes I just paint over those white areas again if I don't like them. Um, but you can't easily rub off paint and recreate those white areas again once you've like painted over them. So it's better to leave some spots unpainted. That's what I that's what I um, find um, just in case uh, I need them later. So of course, if you don't have enough highlights at the end, what I do is I use some white gouache and I dot in those highlights. Um, but this way is sort of cleaner and more interesting to me. All right, so the second color is a red, which I'm going to be using to paint the red wall. And it's a mixture of quinacridone rose plus pyrrole scarlet. So I really loaded the brush with a lot of paint so that I can get quite an even wash. Um, but for this red wall, I actually don't mind having some unevenness um, because that will actually contribute to more texture on the wall. Um, but for the green awning, I actually um, focused quite a lot on having that even wash of paint. So I loaded the brush with quite a lot of paint and um, painted the whole surface um, quite fast in larger strokes. And um, I did not let the paint dry on the paper um, before I put down the, the cons uh, consecutive strokes. So yeah, you kind of get what I mean. Um, you can see that the green wash is quite even and now you can see the red is uh, not as even and that's because I actually um, as I was painting I dipped my brush in water uh, so I added a bit more water in cer certain areas and then uh, in certain areas I added more paint to the brush and then in uh, those areas at the top there I actually did a second layer of paint um, to make that area darker Alright, so now I'm using New Gamboge, which is a warm sort of yellow-orange and I'm mixing a little bit of that red into it um, and then I'm going to be introducing some yellow to the sketch.
So for the wood colored areas, I'm using Burnt Umber from Holbein. And um, burnt umber is less reddish than burnt sienna and I think um, that the door could do with a touch more red so I'm adding a little bit of red paint from before onto my brush and so now we have a more reddish brown. So doing that tweak to the color halfway um, actually worked out pretty well I think because it provided some variation in color for that door and for other um, wood colored areas. Now I'm adding some more yellow to the lamps at the top and um, in certain areas here and there. So this is just as a complement to those, th those uh, two main colors. Um, it's not exactly the same as the picture, but I thought it would look nice as a complement to the other colors. Here I am mixing French Ultramarine and New Gamboge and we have this sort of dull green color and I'm going to be using this green to paint in um, the, those plants and also the signboard on the top left. So now I'm using that same dull green to paint some shadows on the awning.
So as you can see, I'm now mixing French ultramarine with burnt umber and that produces a dark blue-gray. So that will be used for the windows and for the majority of shadows. I'm also preparing some thalo blue on a smaller brush. So now I'm painting in the glass on the windows and I personally like dabbing in some lighter blue first before filling up the other areas with the darker blue and not forgetting to leave a few tiny areas unpainted so that we have that white paper showing through and those will be um, highlights. So after that first layer, I go over the upper areas with another layer of dark blue. And now I'm starting to paint in those shadows with that same dark gray blue.
Here I'm adding another layer of that gray blue so that we have even darker shadows. After that, I begin adding some finishing touches and little details such as some bricks on the wall. Alright, so this part is a little bit tricky and I myself wasn't so sure about the words on the sign. So I started out with some yellow. Um, I wrote in those words in Korean and then I didn't really like it. So I blurred it out with some red paint. Uh, and then in the end, I decided to use dark paint to write the letters in again. And later on, I also used my pen to refine the words. So it's tricky trying to do delicate strokes with a light color such as yellow when we're using watercolor only. So in this case, maybe using some yellow gouache would have been easier.
So now we're at the final step and I'm just adding some little details with my pen. At this point, I really thought that I was done and I was pretty happy with the outcome. But after looking at the uh, at the sketch for a while, I decided that it needed more contrast. So I went in again and added more um, darker shadows.
Alright, so we are done. I really hope you found this video helpful to you and if you did, do remember to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.